All right, guys, happy Saturday night. I posted this, wasn't planning on doing this video so soon, but there's so many people here, and I don't just wanna say that left is Sony, right is Canon, that is what I wanna say, but there's so much more that I wanna say besides that, that I'm like, you know what? I'm just Saturday night, might as well go to work and uh, create a little video here real quick. But it is true that the left is the three-year-old Sony A7 III, full frame, 24 megapixels, uh, $2,000 camera. The right is the brand new Canon R6, $2,500 camera, 20 megapixels. The, the color is what I was focused on though, because you hear all this stuff about Canon color science, Canon colors, Canon colors, Canon colors. I've shot Sony full-time now for three years. And if you look at all of the big dogs from YouTube, and I'm not gonna make this fancy video and show them, but like Tony Northrup in particular, Gerald Undone is phenomenal. And they have pretty much debunked the whole Canon color science for a while now. They've done plenty of blind tests with, you know, hundreds of thousands of subscribers. You know, I think Tony actually has over a million. Gerald Undone's stuff is absolutely amazing. His stuff, as far as from a technical standpoint, he's worth watching every time. Um, and from Tony's stuff, like when he compares Canon, Sony, Nikon, and Fujifilm, like Canon usually comes in last. Um, so interesting, right? And by far, most people are ch choosing the left here. Um, me knowing the colors now, if you showed these to me, I could tell you which one's Canon and Sony uh, because I know what to look for. But with the new Sony A7S III, which is a camera I have on pre-order as well. That color science from what I've seen from all the YouTubers, it looks to be phenomenal because they've taken their color science from their Hollywood studio cameras. Uh, you gotta realize Sony makes a lot of movies and all that stuff is coming down the pipeline to uh, some of their latest stuff. And so to me, I would never buy a camera just based on colors you're always going to edit them anyway. And that brings me to my next point, which is perhaps the, it's why I got on here. Instead of just saying that the left is Canon or the left is Sony, the right is Canon. I want to hop in here to Lightroom and just kind of show you that uh, the biggest thing that I think I've uncovered of why people prefer Canon colors is the colors that you see on the back of your screen on a Canon versus a Sony is night and day. And I will say this, that the colors that you see on the back of your screen, Canon kills it. It looks so good. Lightroom now actually will pull that embedded preview in the library tab until you make an edit. When you make an edit, then it's going to redraw the preview in the library. Wait till you see this image the way you'd see it on the back of a Canon. I'm going to show it to you right now. So here we are. Um, Right here, you can see down here, embedded preview. So this is what the Canon is showing you on the back of the screen, and it is gorgeous. The skin tone's amazing. The, uh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. The skin tone's amazing. The highlights and the shadows, the shadows have opened up. It is like so good. Like I wouldn't even, th this is like a final edit to me. The sharpening is there, the contrast is there. But then the moment you go over to develop, and let me get this to uh, this thing here. So look at the difference between what you see on the back of your camera and then when you go into develop. And now this is somewhat normal, right? As far as uh, you always get that kind of color shift with any camera. So where this really gets crazy is when you shoot an aperture priority, which I shoot in 90% of the time. And I was actually just talking with Eric because she's like, I haven't shot an aperture priority forever. And I'm like, well, if you, count on your in-camera meter to kind of give you your markers like where you're at then you're kind of shooting an aperture priority anyway because you're depending on the camera meter so i always just shoot an aperture priority because it's a little bit easier and use exposure compensation based on what i'm seeing in this through the viewfinder or through the histogram but histogram doesn't tell the whole story really i mean you can have a picture that's exposed correctly and, and most of it's to the left or to the right so aperture priority is where I shoot and um, just wait to see this. So I'm gonna go to Canon's aperture priority shot. So this one was in manual mode and this one was in aperture priority. Still looks phenomenal just from the preview that you see on your camera. 
But watch what happens when you go to develop this one. It is so much darker. And same thing with the R5. If I go to the R5 file here in Aperture Priority, look how dark it is as far as the raw file. But then if I go back to the library to show the preview, I mean, look at that. It's like perfect when you look at it on your camera, you bring it into Lightroom and edit, and it's much darker. So back and forth, what you see on your camera, what the raw file actually is. Now, what about the Sony as far as the embedded preview? Here's the embedded preview for the Sony. Doesn't look that good at all. And this is again my theory of like why people love Canon colors because they're seeing colors on their uh, camera. But when you go to develop, it's uh, different for sure, as you can see, but it's not like this huge, huge shift. If anything, the develop is warmer uh, for sure and kind of like almost at like a a little step ahead as far as where I take the edit. So if there's a couple things that are definitive, it's this. When you get your raw file in with any camera, it's gonna look different and you're going to need to edit it. I mean, that is the whole point of raw though. You're gonna have to edit. The second thing is that Canon processes those previews way more than Sony and you will be in for a huge surprise on a lot of images, like a surprise that looks about like this. Here's what you see in the camera, and here is the develop. So you're gonna have to raise this a lot, and I'll be honest, guys, I have a whole nother shoot I'll get into in another video, where I tried to make actions, or like presets, and I started messing around with uh, profiles. I actually bought some profiles to try and just edit, like develop the raw file to look as good as the preview. And it is difficult. I'm not gonna lie. It's difficult to edit the photo to make us to make it look as good as this back here. Now you notice that I had to undo that because if you make any adjustments and then you go back to library, now it's gonna draw the preview from your development. And so um, I've had to take many a screenshot, like I'll undo, I'll undo this here back to normal so that when I go back to library, it's gonna pull from the embedded preview now. But to give you like a little bit of a deal here, like when I saw this picture, you can see this is a, I took the screenshot of it and that was the embedded preview. When I brought this in, I was like, oh my goodness, uh, I am selling all the Sony stuff because I don't even wanna edit this picture, it's so good. But then when I went to develop it, uh, the dev you know, it's just, it's much darker and it's much more normal. So I tried to edit a bunch of these pics from the pumpkin patch and make my own like R5 conversion preset. And I actually bought actually some really good pre-files. Uh, CF Standard V3, you can see gets it closer than just the Adobe color profile. I mean, it's a great step in the right direction. And then if I brighten it up quite a bit, you can see that looks closer to what we get here but the embedded preview from Canon, like what it's showing on the back of the screen is still better. <laughs> so the third thing that I would say that we know for sure is this, that I, I personally would not buy a camera based off of color science. I would buy a camera and, and invest in a system for a lot of other reasons. And I will leave it at that for now. I've got a lot more to come with this discussion. Um, I've shot a lot of pictures in a lot of different lighting scenarios, and um, the results are very consistent to this, though. Uh, Canon, when you shoot an aperture priority, in both the R5 and the R6, same thing with the 5D series, same thing with the 1DX that I owned on the 1DX2 and the 1DX3, always had to bump those up by at least two-thirds of a stop or a stop. What is good, I will say one other little preview, is that the ISO invariance is much better on these new cameras for Canon. Not quite as good as Sony still, even with uh, three-year-old Sonys, but you can raise those shadows and uh, it's much. It's starting to be a lot more like a Sony there. Uh, which I'm glad to see because you're having to raise most of the Canon files if you are just gonna shoot even with exposure compensation or even with the meter that the camera's giving you while shooting in manual mode. I'll leave it at that. More coming soon. Like and subscribe if you want to get the notification when new stuff comes out with all this. Thanks, guys.